Statistics and Excel, Binomial Distribution Manual and Excel Function, Sales Calls, Example. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But... But that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like this CPA thinking cap, for example. CPA thinking CAP, you see what we did with like with the letters? And this CPA thinking cap is not just for CPAs either. Anyone can and should have at least one, possibly multiple CPA thinking caps. Why? Because based on our scientific survey of five people, all of whom directly profit from the sale of these CPA thinking caps, wearing this CPA thinking cap without a doubt, according to the survey, increases accounting productivity tenfold. Yeah, at least. Yeah, apparently the hat actually channels like accounting energy from the quantum field ether directly into your head allowing you to navigate spreadsheets faster. It's kind of like how in like the Matrix when Neo learns Kung Fu, or at least that's what the scientific survey saying. So get one because the scientific survey participants could really use some extra cash. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, three tabs down below, example, practice, blank, example, in essence, answer key, practice tab, having pre-formatted cells so you can get to the heart of the practice problem, blank tab, blank worksheet, so we can practice formatting the cells within Excel as we work through the practice problem. Let's look at the example tab to get an idea of where we will be going. We're looking at a binomial distribution type situation with a scenario of sales calls. So when we have a sales calls, there's only two outcomes that could possibly happen. One, we have a sale or two, we have no sale. So that's one of the conditions for a binomial distribution. We're gonna think about the process in a more manual type of method to get a more intuitive understanding of what is happening. And then we'll do the same calculation with the binome.dist.range function. And then we will also plot our data on the right as well. So let's go back on to the blank tab and fill this thing out. We're gonna select the entire worksheet to start out like we normally do, put down, lay down the baseline foundation, right click in the selected area, formatting the cells, currency, negative numbers bracketed and red, get rid of the dollar sign and the decimal for now, I'm gonna add them as needed, okay. Holding control, scrolling in a bit, we'll put down our conditions up top. We're gonna to say that N is gonna be equal to the number of fixed trials or sales calls. So that's gonna be the number of calls that we're going to be having. I'm gonna double click on uh, A here to widen the cell. I'm gonna select the entire thing. I'll make it bold, home tab, font group and embolden the entire thing. I'm gonna say that we're gonna have four of them. So we'll start with four and then P is gonna be equal to the probability of success, which is a sale or sale. So success is obviously defined here as making a sale, not success, not making a sale. And as with many sales calls, the success rate is quite low on it, so we're gonna say it's 15%. I put 0.15 home tab number group percentify it so we can recognize it. And then X is gonna be what we're looking for equals the number of sales in four tries. So this is gonna be the goal that we are looking for. So we're gonna say, what's the probability of success that we get three out of four sales and and so we'll do this kind of manually and see what's the probability that that's going to happen 
and then we'll use the binome.dist to hopefully have any better understanding of it after that point. So we're going to define success, success defined as a sale, right? <laughs> and then, uh, and we'll set, we'll call that just an S here for our table. And then not success is defined as no sale. And we'll mark that off as NS, not a sale. And then the possibilities. Now, when I when I look at the table, then when we start to build our table, we're going to say, okay, well, how many combinations do we have? Uh, if if we're talking about four, we've got the number of fixed trials at four, uh, and we're going to say three out of four are going to be successes. So when we start to build our table, we're going to think, how many combinations do we have? So uh, there's a formula for that, and it's going to be equal to count. Uh, I'm sorry, it's going to be equal to combine. Here it is, C-O-M-B-I-N. And then I'm going to say uh, the number is going to be four, and then comma, and the number chosen is going to be three. And if I say enter, that's going to give us four uh, combinations. Now note that this is going to change down here. If I said that I wanted two successes out of uh, out of the trials of four, then I get a six down here. So we'll do a couple examples to get an idea of a couple different examples, but we'll start off with the three. Let's do a quick spell check because I'm pretty sure I misspelled a couple things. Possibilities. P for possibility. Fixed this song. I don't. There was a song I remember vaguely about P for pot. I'm going to close up column C a little bit. We can make column B a little bit smaller as well. And then let's build up our table. So I'm going to say we have the possibilities. And I'll make this one a little bit wider so I can see that possibilities. And I'm going to say then we have one, uh, two, three, four up top. And then so so on each each of the trials, we have the four calls that are happening. And then I know that I have four possibilities. So I'm going to just kind of call them P1, P2, P3, P4. Four, and this is where this number four comes in. So I'm going to say, okay, there should be four possibilities. Let's make this top bit uh, our header formatting, home tab, font group. I'm going to make it black and white. And then I'm going to center these numbers. I'm going to go to the font or the alignment and center those. Okay, so what kind of possibilities do we have? Then? And maybe I'll make this black and white too. I'll, I'll make just so I can, this is going to be a kind of a, detailed tables try to make it as defined as we can so what kind of possibilities might we have well if if we're saying i'm not looking at this 15 percent right now i'm just trying to say how many different combinations or what are the, what are the combinations that we could have which would result in three sales out of the four possible calls right three out of the four possible calls well, if I have four possibilities, then on, on each of them, I'm going to have one of them be a not sale. Only one of them is going to be a not sale. So I could, I could first think about the not sales. Like I could have a not sale on the first call and then sales on all the other calls. Or I could have a not sale on the second call and then sales on all the other calls. Or I could have a not sale on the third call and then sales on all the other calls. Or I could have a not sale on the fourth call and sales on all the other calls. Now, remember that it's unlikely that you're going to get three out of four sales. We're going to we're going to take into consideration the probability of this happening per call, which is only 15%. Right now, we're just trying to think of what are the combinations that would have to happen to result in what we're looking for, which are three out of four, uh, three out of four items being sales. Well, it would be I would have all sales for all four calls except for one of them which means the combinations would have to be one of these right i would have a not sale i'd either call 
one of four at two of four at three of four at four of four and all the other ones would be sales which i'll say is an s equals s equals s all the other ones are sales success success even though this is an unlikely scenario we'll see the 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 likelihood of this is not high because we're not taking into consideration the 15 percent likelihood you know that we get a sale per call right now we're just looking at those combos and so there's the possible combos that we could have so if i if i give a check then just to check that x is three meaning three out of the four are sales we can do a, a formula to check that we should get three each time let's do a count if formula this is going to be equal to count if brackets we want to pick up this range count that if comma it meets the criteria of being an s so now it's going to count the all the s's in that range we're going to say okay there's three of them that makes sense perfect check that's what we want because copying that down oh i can't copy it down because i need an absolute double click in here and that uh, b5 i want to absolute it f4 to absolute and enter and now i can copy it down by double clicking the fill handle so they all come out to three out of four that looks good i'm going to go up top home tab font group black white Let's make all these a little bit thinner. Put put all these on a diet. Make them a little bit thinner. And boom. Better them than me on the diet. Right. Okay. Let's not get let's get sidetracked here. So then I'm gonna say that now now we can think about the, the possibilities per out. Let's make it even a little thinner. The possibilities per outcome. So what's the likelihood? that on each on each call i get a not sale versus a sale well the, so so now i can take into consideration my percentages well let's let's look at that i'm going to once again label them one two three and four but this time think about our our likelihoods the percent likelihoods let's make this black white let's make these thinner as well somewhat similar thinness and we can center it maybe okay so now we're going to say well uh the likelihood that 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 we have uh an in a, a not sale is is going to be one minus 15 percent. so the likelihood that we have a sale is going to be only 15 percent per call so let's do that first and we could i could just type in here you know 15 percent we could try to get fancy with a formula or something like that i could say that if i say equals if formula brackets and we're going to say logic test if uh, this number is equal to a s then what do we want to have happen we want you to then put this number up top uh, of 15%. If not, comma, what do you want us to do if it's not that? Then we want you to take one minus, uh, minus, not minus this number. So in other words, I want you to, if, if this is an S, I want you to then put the 15%. If it's not an S, I want you to take 100% or 1 minus 15% or 0.15 and enter. Let's percentify it and see if it does it. Home tab, numbers, percentify it, and there's the 15%. Now I can copy that across. If I double click on this, I can say, okay, this, everything that's in my data, I need to make absolute so it doesn't move. This one I don't want to make absolute because I want it to move. So everything in column B, like this B5, I'm going to select F4, dollar sign before the B and the 5. This one, I'm going to select F4, dollar sign before the B and the 2. This one, I'm going to select F4, dollar sign before the B and the 2. And enter. And I should be able to copy this across, right? I'm going to copy it this way. 15s 
I'm going to copy it this way. And there's the 85, right? So there's an, there's an 85% chance each call that I don't get uh, a sale. And there's a 15% chance each call that I get a sale. And let's copy that down and we'll get the same, a similar kind of outcome here. You can see the pattern like a tic-tac-toe, but four in a row right here, <laughs> four in a row. Uh, but here, right, you can see those, the, the same pattern here. So 85% for all of the no sales and 15% for everything else, which is uh, a sale. Okay. Well then if I, if I, uh, then, then look at my totals over here, we can say, okay, I can multiply those together to get my total percent. So I can say, this is going to be equal to that times this times this times this. So we're multiplying them all together and I can then go to the home tab number group. I'll, I'll percentify it add a couple decimals 0.29% about. We can get to that same number by doing the product, a product function. So in a, in, this will be a little bit faster. So we'll multiply all of them together. Instead of equal sum, we say equals product brackets of those. And it's a little bit faster of a formula. And we get to that same 0.29%. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna copy those down and then at the bottom, we're going to get the probability of X, uh, X, let's say equal to, and then again, I'm going to say this is equal to this number three. What's the probability? It's the sum of these, which I can say by going alt equals and then boom. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, hold on. That's the wrong cell. <laughs> Like, that's not right. Uh, alt equals here and boom. Let's percentify this home tab number group percentify, add some decimals and we get the 1.15. I'll just make this, let's call it the totals and I'll make it black, white center, a little skinnier and underline home tab font group underline. So we come up then. So to the probability of, of it equaling exactly three, then X equaling exactly three, number of sales in four tries. In other words, the likelihood that we get three successes, sales in four tries is quite low, right? It's 1.15%. It's uh, so we thought about all the possibilities and then we applied our percentage outcomes for each of the possibilities, which has the same likelihood per call. One call is not influencing the other and there's our amount. Now we can also do that with the, ex the Excel function. Now that we have a better idea of what the Excel function is doing, we could say, let's just do it with the Excel function. We can use the equals binome, binome dot dist. And I'm gonna use the range one because that's the newest, the latest and greatest. The number of trials is going to be, we'll say four comma, the probability per trial is 0.15 or 15% comma, and then, uh, and then the number, uh, the numbers is going to be three and enter and percentify, add a couple decimals, make this a little wider and we get that. So 1.15, so we can get to that same uh, result and kind of get an idea of what is happening. All right, let's go ahead and I'm gonna make this a little fancier by putting our blue into it, highlighting this home tab. We're gonna go to the font group. I'm gonna make it blue, hitting the more button, blue here, boom, borders, home tab, font group, borders. And then this one, I'll make it blue and border too. These I'll make blue and bordered and then, uh, and then, and then maybe this I'll make black and white home tab font group, black and white. Cause it's kind of like part of the header area. And then maybe this I'll make blue and bordered home tab font group border and blue, something like that. 
All right, let, now I'm gonna do the same, the whole same thing again, but this time uh, I'll change this. Uh, I'll change. I'll change this to a two. So we want two out of four, and just see what the what the difference is. So I'm gonna copy the whole thing. I'm putting my cursor on one down to uh, eight. Control C, and I'll paste this down here and just make that little tweak. So now I'm gonna say, all right. What if I say that I want to have the goal to be two? So two out of four. That you would think that would still be more likely, you know, to happen, even though you still got the fifteen percent likelihood of each call being a sale versus a non-sale. So now, if I look at my table, I can't just use the same table exactly because now the number of combinations where I would get two out of four out of four. Uh, is now six instead of four. So I have to add a couple rows down here to to make this work. So I'm going to say, all right, let's let's go into here. I'm going to select, maybe I'll select these two. And then I'm going to insert and push these cells down. So I'm going to right click and insert, but I want to shift the cells down and then OK. So now I've got probability four, P of five, P of six. And let's just redo this whole uh, this whole table. I'm just gonna say, let's just redo this whole thing. And I'm gonna say, all right, if I if I get two, what's the like how how could the combinations work here? Well, I could have like a sale and then a sale, but and then not a sale, and then not a sale. That's one way it could happen, or I could have a I can have a not a sale, and then like a sale, and a sale, and then not a sale. So you can see the pattern that's happening, right? I'm just thinking of these two S's going through the possibilities. I could have then not a sale, not a sale, and then a sale and then a sale, right? Or I could have, I could have a sale and then not a sale and then not a sale and then a sale. <laughs> or I could have a sale, a not a sale and then a sale and then a not a sale. Or I could have a not a sale and then a sale and then a not a sale and then a sale right so this gets a little tedious so then if i if i try to so does this all work so all of these i should have two sales so i can do my count if again equals count if brackets the range is going to be this comma count it if you find a sale in it, which is our success. F4 on the keyboard, so I can copy that down and enter. And so I've got two, 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 all the way down. So everything looks like these are all viable combinations. I'm pretty sure there's only six of them because I calculated that there's six of them. So I think I got all the combinations, I hope. And then we can say, all right, what are the probabilities? Well, this one, the sales now, it's still 15% likelihood that of a sale happening. So I can say this is equals if brackets logic test if uh, if this cell equals the sale. Now this is outside of my table, so I'm going to make it F4 because I want it. And that's a dollar sign before the B and the 14, so it's an absolute reference. If that's equal to that, then what do I want it to do, comma, I want you to then uh, put 15%. And then I'm going to make that F4 or absolute because I want to copy it down. If not, comma, then I want you to take one or 100% minus the 15% or 0.15 F4 on the keyboard because I want to copy that down. And there's our logic test. So I can say, okay, enter, that should give me a 15. You could just type these in here, but I'm trying to practice our Excel formulas. 
I'm going to copy this to the right. I'm going to copy that down and it should populate automatically. And then we could multiply this, this times this times this times this, but the sum product is the easier formula. So we're, I'm sorry, the product is the faster formula. So we're going to, instead of using the sum, we're multiplying them with the product and doing the same thing all the way down. And so there we have that. I'm going to underline it here. And then I don't think this total is correct anymore. I'm going to delete that and say alt equals 9.75. Now let's double check it over here with our, I'll just retype this in here, equals the binome dot dist dot range. And you could use the dot dist one as well, but let's keep with the dot range because it's more flexible. The trials we're going to say are four comma the probability each time 0.15 or 15% comma the numbers we want to and enter. So there we have it a couple ways. Now, of course, you might put this in a in a in a, a, a table type format. So you could say it's often useful once we're using the function, I'm going to make a skinny O up top and say X P of X. I'll make this black and white home tab fonts group black and white center and we'll say this is going from zero one two three four and i could just do all of the outcomes nice and easily here right with our nice function so i'm going to say this equals binome dot dist dot range tab the trials are going to be then the trials are going to be these uh, control shift down, comma, the probability, I'm sorry, hold on a sec. The trials are going to be four, F4 on the keyboard, then comma, and then the probability going to the left is going to be 15%, F4 on the keyboard, comma, and then the numbers are going to be this range control shift down and it'll give me my spill and enter. So it spills it down and I'm going to go home tab, number group, percentify it and add a couple decimals. So there we have it. So we get to the same result we had here for uh, the likelihood of two successes and the likelihood of the three successes, right? So then I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Let's make it blue and bordered. Home tab, font group, blue, border it. Or that was, I did that in backwards reverse, but you see what I'm doing. And then let's insert a little chart for it just for the fun of it. Insert chart. Let's make this kind of chart, a bar chart this time. Pulling it over. It's not picking up the zero here because it's trying to guess its own numbers. So I'm going to go to my data and edit and say pick up the zero and do use our data set and okay and so we can plot it like that or we can plot it with a line chart uh as well so that's the the uh general idea and i was going to clean it up a little bit more but that looks pretty good so let's put some borders around this maybe Put some borders around this and I'll save it and we could review it maybe. Let's try to spell check it. Okay, so there we have it. 